Welcome back, listeners. Uh, you are tuning in uh, into Kingdom Voice Radio. We are we are carrying on with our discussion for this hour on divine healing, and this is Apostle Vigel Maniendra. Um. So before the break, we mentioned that healing is a matter of identity. You know, you have to know who you are, and you have to just walk in it. You know, because healing is just a byproduct of who you are. Uh, this. This realization, you know, it, it enables you to have the greatest levels of faith, you know. And, and that's the only way healing will work, if you've got so much faith. You know, the faith that, you know, the, um, the Bible referred to as, as a childlike faith, when Jesus makes an example about a child. So the faith that, you know, a little child has, you know, when he asks for something from his father, that faith of knowing, because you know, because you know that's the level of faith that we need to have and the more we exercise this the more it's gonna grow you know we need to exercise our faith and then it's gonna grow as time goes that is actually the difference in someone praying the same prayer and nothing happens and someone praying the exact same prayer but something happens the only difference there is the levels of faith you know someone who has come to know who they are and their faith is just at another level so um you just need to step in you know and, and just you know start doing this thing you know uh, put all fear aside for the first time you're gonna have a lot of uh, fear you just need to be intentional and be prepared be ready to look like a fool for christ there is nothing wrong with that even if you pray and nothing happens in fact one of the guys that i'm following with regard to this before he could see any miracle he prayed probably for more than 200 people so imagine praying for that number of people and nothing happens you know, but that's the kind of attitude we need to have, <clears throat> uh, that, that resistance, and do this thing as a part of a lifestyle, not just as a once-off event. Wherever we are, you know, if we see a need, we just, you know, we just meet those people and use that as an opportunity. All right, so I promised that in this last segment, I'm going to go into the practical side of things now, on how to actually pray for healing. Uh, actually, one of the reasons people, uh, let's say someone who has come to know who they are, but they still struggle to pray for healing uh, with, the, with the results. There's, there's quite a few things, you know, I'm going to talk about those dynamics. One of them is you might not be praying right. You might not be exercising your authority when you're praying. For instance, um, if you check all the healing scriptures that we just, that we just read, none of them says we must ask when we are praying for healing it just says heal the sick cleanse the leper so that's that's something that say you you know it's so direct that this is something you must do you know uh, but obviously we don't do it in our power by our own doing we do it in the name of jesus you know so what we need to understand is when we pray for situations anything that is in this earth realm we have to to exercise our kingly authority that's part of who we are uh, you know that's one of the things i teach when i teach about identity the fact that we are sons of god and we are also a royal priesthood we are kings and we are priests but that's a discussion for another time but we need to pray like kings how do kings you know do kings they never ask kings declare kings command you know kings uh, they, they legislate you know so that's what you need to do if someone is sick, you need to command that sickness to leave that person. If someone has got pain, you need to command that pain to leave. You don't ask God to heal the sickness. You don't ask God to remove the pain. That is not the way of praying for healing or else you might not see any results. So you need to take a bold stance of a king and you need to speak to the healing, I mean to the sickness as if it's a person. So what helps me with regard to this is, as much as I understand, not all sicknesses are demonic. So there are sicknesses that are just natural and everything. But for me, what helped me when I started doing this is I would picture each and every sickness as a demon. I would picture each and every pain as being caused by a demon. Because if that is the case, I would even picture that demon sitting in that spot where that person is having pain. So I would command that sickness as if I'm looking at that demon and I'm commanding that demon that you sickness and I'll call it by name. If it's uh, arthritis, I'll say arthritis, I command you right now to go in the name of Jesus. So that just helped me to sort of, you know, uh, 
to, to be that direct and because you don't want to be indirect and sort of be talking in third person and all that uh, you know going around and saying um, what example can I make and saying uh, now we command uh, or we're gonna command this sickness to go or whatever no 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 you need to be direct with it you know look it just like you're chasing a dog you know when you're chasing a dog you look it straight and you say dog right now in the name of Jesus I command you to go and it's important to be that bold you know the minute you are that bold and you've got that level of faith you're gonna start seeing results immediately in fact if you haven't listened or you haven't had anything I've said today if you can just catch this one thing I can promise you you can actually start leave your leave your room right now and see someone who's got any kind of sickness if it's got a name it's gonna bow down to the name of, of Christ you just command that sickness cancer Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave this body. Go in the name of Jesus. If they've got pain, pain, I command you to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So basically, that is it, guys. There is no, like, it's not a secret or anything like that. It's just that a lot of us, we tend to, to, to sort of ask and be polite and we want to be, you know, we want to be, I don't know. Um, and and there's, no, there's no authority in that, you know. That's why we would pray for something and nothing happens because we are not exercising our kingly authority. Hallelujah. So um, a lot of people then um, have, have got a question now uh, that what if now I pray and then, you know, nothing happens? Then what do I do? You know, in fact, this is probably the biggest reason why a lot of people are scared of even attempting to pray for, for healing. What if nothing happens? What do I say to the person? You know, how am I going to look? You know, I, I, I'm going to make God look like a fool or, or foolish. Or... And I'm here to tell you that it's actually okay. As long as you don't, I've already stated it, that you shouldn't blame God and you should definitely not blame the person. You know, uh, you should understand that sometimes when you pray, the healing might not happen instantly. You understand? So there are times whereby I've prayed and then nothing seems to happen at that point in time, but then later that day, or sometimes even the following few days, then the person is healed. So when you pray, you must always pray for something to happen instantly. But if it doesn't happen instantly, you then leave room. Don't say it hasn't happened, because if you, you say nothing has happened, then you are shutting down even the possibility of it happening in future so you must always leave that room that something let's believe that you know as you go you're gonna be healed let's believe that you know the healing uh, is gonna manifest it's just a matter of time you must always leave that room and tell the other person that you know let's leave room sometimes the healing doesn't happen instantly sometimes it happens later on and sometimes maybe in the in the next few days or whatever that's, so that means all of a sudden you've got nothing to worry about because whether something happens immediately or it doesn't happen immediately, like you, you, you know what to do, you know what to say. So I think that's one of the reasons is we, we don't seem to know what we would say or what we would do if nothing happens. So this alone should, should give you even more confidence to go out and pray for someone because you know that you're going to aim for something instant, but if nothing happens instantly, you're going to leave that room for something to happen, you know, uh, as time goes. By the way, a very important key that I've just left. After you've prayed for someone, this is one of the things that we don't do. And probably one of the reasons we don't see as much healing. Once you've prayed for someone, test. Oh, now this is the big one. We are so scared as believers to test. We, you know, we, we just pray for someone and then we say, oh, God bless you. Uh, we believe you are healed. And a lot of times we are lying, like nothing has happened, that person is not healed. So we should actually not be scared to let the person test. In fact, I've realized in my own ministry that a lot of times the healing actually started as a result of testing. Because when you are testing, that requires a certain level of faith. And remember, it's faith that is required so that healing can happen. So just by you letting the person test, and that person actually is taking that step of faith as well to test. That alone could be the reason that the healing is starting to happen. Meaning, if you had not tested, nothing would have happened. And you would think, we have failed. 
you understand. So it's so important to pray and make that prayer of faith and you know command that sickness to go, command that pain to go, command life into that person. And you do that in a few seconds. You don't have to take minutes and say all the right words and all. No, you just exercise your authority. Few seconds, 10, 20 seconds is more than enough. And then you ask the person to test immediately. And you must ask them to be honest. Né? They must not do us any favors. Like, I'm so convinced of this thing that it works. I don't need them to sort of, uh, you know, bangza me or anything. No, they must test for real. And uh, if nothing has happened for the first time, do not be afraid to pray again. You know, even Jesus, when he prayed for, prayed for that blind man, uh, he said, what do you see? And he said, Ubonabandu as, as trees, you know. And then he prayed again. So if our Lord at some point had to pray multiple times, how much more will it be with us? So that's another issue is we are so scared that we, we, we don't want to repeat this thing. Sometimes I've prayed five times before I've seen instant healing, you know. So we must be so persistent, you know, because what is it going to take? Like five minutes of their time? Uh, and, you know, if they've been having this sickness for five years or even, you know, for their, for their entire lives, probably they can spare five minutes. So just make sure the person you're praying for is always at ease. You know, they are not uh, in any panic mode. You must always be, keep them calm. They must, the minute you panic yourself, then you're going to make them panic. So if you pray and nothing happens, tell them that, no, that's fine. Let me pray again. Sometimes I have to pray two, three times so that they know you are in control and keep on asking them to test. One of the things that I use is uh, I always ask them, uh, what is the pain level before I pray for them, you know, so that I can pray and then I ask them, what is the level now in a scale of like one to 10. And a lot of times, each and every time I pray, it will be reducing, you know, and I know the minute it starts reducing, it's going to ultimately go all the way to zero. Hallelujah. So I'm just giving you guys practical points now, you know, uh, that you have to sort of um, employ when you are, when you're administering healing. Um, and then what happens now? Someone will ask me, what happens now if someone is not getting healed at all? Uh, even after a while, like maybe this is someone you know, even after months. And then that means the healing has failed, guys. Like, uh, you still don't blame God because it's His will. You still don't blame the person because, uh, like I said, what if they are an unbeliever or they are infants and all that? You know that you are the one who still needs to grow. You can grow, exercise your faith, and you can keep on praying for that person, you know until they start getting healed so just don't get discouraged do this thing as a lifestyle and you know just keep the faith man because i can tell you now the devil is gonna try by all means to discourage you but do not stop you know and uh, it's so easier when you do this let me tell you this is one of the things that was easier for me it's easier when you do this for people you don't know uh, you know at times it can be challenging to pray for your family for your friends you know i'm not sure whether it's the whole Emotion that is attached to it or you know, uh, you know, you know these people you know the, the, the struggle they have gone through with all this healing this sickness and so if you are starting I would strongly encourage that just start with strangers, you know, go to the mall go to the park go to the street Just as you see someone who is limping or you can even ask people even if they seem to be all right Because they might be having some pain, but they you can't see you know just by They, they have become so resistant to that pain Such that they walk normally Ask, that, ask people if they've got any pain, you know, uh, and ask to pray for them. You will be shocked with their results. You will not believe, you will think they are lying. I promise you. So even if you've never done this, even if you are still a, 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 an infant in God, you've just got born again just yesterday, you can start moving in this now as we're speaking. You don't need to have been saved for 10 years. Uh, you don't need to have been reading your Bible every day. You don't need to have been praying, you know, every day or maybe you have first prayed this morning you know as and whenever you can just start moving in this thing and i promise you the effectiveness that you will have in the body will be so great you know i've been able to win souls uh, in the streets i remember this other time i won i led about eight people to christ all at once you know and tell me if that's, that was going to be possible if I just went to them and just, you know, talked to them and, you know, because those people, they were probably already churched. They probably went to church and all that, but they were not convinced. But the minute I, I started 
being the love of Christ, you know, and showing that love and demonstrating it and, you know, allowing Christ to heal them and everything, then they were convinced that, wow, okay, this causes even the, the, the highest levels of discussions to just be short. You know, you don't have to talk and try to convince people. You just show it to them, you know, end of discussion. As a result, I no longer get involved now in theological debates and all that. Avoid those as much as you can. Ask if there's anyone with a sickness or pain and just heal that person. End of discussion. So uh, I, I pray that you guys will start moving in this. And the sooner the better, you know, because I can tell you now, when I started moving in this, it took me so long, unnecessarily long, because I didn't have anyone who was guiding me in this step by step. So I've given you all the basic tools, but unfortunately we've got little time. I believe we, we are almost, uh, you know, uh, out of time. We are left with like five minutes or so. So if someone wants to know more information on this, you know, this is one of the areas I, I sort of specialize in, you know. I can take you out. We can go to the closest mall. We can go to the closest park. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm based in Centurion. You know, I can go anywhere, you know, around, you know, uh, the, the closer areas of Joburg or Pretoria. You can meet up and, you know, we can do this thing practically. Or, uh, if you are far, I'm developing uh, some form of online training. You know, I'm also writing an ebook as we're speaking. It's almost done. I know some of uh, those who follow me, they have been eagerly waiting for it. Uh, we're just finalizing the touch-ups. So I, I'm, I'm very confident that before the end of next week, it will be done because we have to make sure that it goes through all the process and proofreading and all that. So there, there is going to be online training that is going to be available for everyone, you know, uh, and we also have a YouTube channel. So I try as much as I can to capture videos and, you know, when I pray for people so that I can use those, number one, as testimonials number two for training purposes so that you can see exactly how to go about this step by step so if you want to see those videos you can go to my youtube channel uh, because i've posted uh, a number of videos there so i encourage you to subscribe to the channel the channel is um i told you that one of my names is prosecutor so and i'm a i'm a i'm a phd candidate so i i call myself on social media dr prosecutor so it's dr underscore prosecutor. That's my YouTube channel, dr underscore prosecutor. Um, and then on Facebook, you can search for Dr. Prosecutor Miguel Manindra. Uh, my Facebook page is dr underscore prosecutor. So uh, you can also, you know, WhatsApp me. Uh, my WhatsApp number is 072-2435458. I've got a great deal for everyone who's listening. So, as, as I've told you, um, I'm currently putting an ebook together. We have valued the ebook to an amount of 150. However, today I'm going to be giving it, you know, everyone who's listening, I'm going to be giving it for free. So, anyone who is listening and is actually interested in an ebook, because everything that I've, I've dissected here, it's detailed in depth within the ebook. You can get it for free, just send me your email address. Um, so you can email me. My email is mvigelimanindra at gmail.com. Mvigelimanindra, that's one word, at gmail.com. Or you can, you know, send it to me via WhatsApp, 072-2435-458. Or uh, via these social platforms I've told you. You can just search for Prosecutor Miguel Manindra. Then you can just give me your email address. Then immediately the ebook is done. I will send it to you and then you can also keep up to date with our you know with our online training and what's happening and all that stuff but yeah that is it guys so um just to recap for maybe those who were not there within the, the first segment of the session i mentioned that the whole idea about healing is centered around identity it's a matter of identity you just have to know who you are in christ and that you you have this already. It's by faith. It's, it's, it's your birthright. You understand? It's like someone who's born in the kingdom. You know, you don't have to work for it. Just by being born again, you've got this thing. Then from there, it's just a matter of exercising that identity and that authority in your everyday lives. Hallelujah. So yes, guys, I thank you so much for, for listening, for tuning in. 
keep on keep on listening to this great radio station kingdom voice radio uh, share it with your friends you know uh, god is doing amazing things through it guys and i just want to do a quick uh, quick prayer as i'm closing so that you know uh, we can just close and then just get to get some of you guys activated in this whole thing father god i thank you for this opportunity i thank you for for the word that has been shared in this platform oh father i thank you that it has reached the hearts of your people i declare and i decree that supernatural boldness is getting into their hearts right now i come against all forms of fear i come against all forms of false word and false doctrines that they have been taught of father in the mighty name of jesus i declare and i decree that from now on they shall start moving in healing in fact right now if any of those who are listening you've got pain or you've got any sickness i just want you to put your hand where that pain is right now in the mighty name of jesus put your hand where your pain is and right now i command that pain to go in jesus name i command that sickness if it has got a name i command it to bow to the name that is above all other names in the mighty name of jesus go i speak healing into your body right now in the mighty name of jesus i want you to test yourself and if you have got any testimony whatsoever just go to the page i know there's a, a facebook page for kingdom just search on facebook kingdom voice radio go to that page you can comment there and just share the page guys we thank the lord hallelujah amen hallelujah yeah great show